I want to say it's a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord here on the 23rd day of December 2018. We are coming up on a new year, and um, I don't have a whole lot of money to hand out, but I want to give a gift to each and every one that's here this morning and those that are listening. And as a pastor, this is the type of gift I believe uh, is appropriate uh, at this time of year. Uh, we'll be over in Revelations 13, where we'll take our uh, sermon this morning. But I would like for you first to turn with me to Luke chapter 8. If you turn with me to Luke chapter 8, we'll start reading around verse number 49. Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see this good number out on uh, the holy day that we are going to be celebrating. Uh, many would today be bringing out messages about uh, the Christ <coughs> child. And uh, many proclaim that this is the day that he was born. And there's really, again, like I said earlier, no need to go into depth of that. We all understand here at the fresh start that Christ was not born on December 25th, uh, but it was the conception of the Holy Spirit with Mary. And it was a wonderful prophetic time uh, of the world. And not to forget that, granted, we know that the world would have us to believe that uh, he was born on this day and keeps us all confused. But that's why God has a remnant, amen? Uh, to make sure that these things are pulled together like they ought to. But let's look in Luke chapter 8 this morning. And before we start, I want to ask Father for his blessings. Precious Father, we love you and we thank you again for this good day. We ask Father that you bless the reading of thy word. Use this individual, Father, as you see fit. And that to bless each and every one and to warn the people. Father, we love you and we thank you again for all that you do. In the precious name of Christ, I'll pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse number 49. While he yet speak, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. If you'll walk back up to verse 41, you'll see this uh, Jairus is who we're talking about. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. 42. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lie a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Back down to verse 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. 52, And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Now, it was very hard for Christ to... Uh, take this. Now, they didn't just snigger. They laughed him to scorn. 54. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. 55. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should not tell no man what was done. For Christ's position had not been settled yet. He had not went to the cross, and many things was to happen. But I brought this out this morning. Friends, you don't need worldly gifts. You don't need things from the department stores. Folks, what you need today is meat. You need the meat of the Word of God Amen. to be able to withstand that which is coming in this near future. 
We have a prophetic future coming. And I want you as my flock to be prepared as much as possible. And that to be able to withstand what this does when we gather together inside this building, we come as one. One unto Christ. But when you go into your prospective places, we are in numerous areas. And you are able to reach people that I'm not. And by giving this understanding of the Word of God, it allows you to be that witness that you need to be. When that opportunity across the kitchen table, <clears throat> the question is brought up about when these things are going to happen. What is the coming of the Lord? What are these things that we are to look upon? And it's the meat that you need today, folks. It's the meat. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everything's going to be just hunky-dory. It's going to be a little rough time, amen? And we know that through the Word of God. But God being our helper, He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Turn with me over to Revelation chapter 13 this morning. I felt this would be the best gift that I could offer to any man, woman, boy, or girl. To let them know what is before you. 2019 is coming rapidly. And we see that many things are being done before the end of the physical year. I'm talking prophetically. Many things are coming together as we see that. And I want you to be wise to these things. And I feel like this chapter 13 is going to highlight many different things for you and, and, and open your mind and the understanding. Many tonight, this morning, will say that, Brother Randall, we've studied this and we know this. Well, if that be the case, let's just call this a refresher. There's nothing wrong with being refreshed. But it might highlight a thing or two that maybe you didn't remember or you didn't understand or you didn't know. So this is my gift to you as the pastor, okay? As we read here in Revelation chapter 13, let's start at verse number one. This is John the Revelator. And he said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. We know here that he said, I stood upon the sands of the sea. Now this sea from Revelation 17, verse 15, the sea is representative of the people. If you were to gather all the people of the world together, that's exactly what it would appear as a large sea. And he said, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And a, a beast rose up out of the people and having seven heads. Now these are governments. Okay? These are seven governments that are established today. These governments are already established. I'm not bringing out something that's too far in the near future. The majority of this, what you're going to learn this morning, is right here in our face. Amen. And it's things that you need to keep your eyes on as watchmen, as knowing these things are fixing to happen. He said these having seven heads... And ten horns. Now we know that the word of the horns is uh, symbolic of power. Okay? Now these horns are the power that come. And he said, and upon uh, his horns ten crowns. Now these ten crowns is uh, believed to be thought as ten kings that will appear the same time the Antichrist will come. And the horns that they have are the power that come with them. In other words, they are going to have power of doing nothing but deception. Complete deception. So when the Antichrist comes, he's going to have a horde of angels that's going to be with him. And not only that, but we see here these ten that will be in majesty with him and able to do many works. Okay? Keep that in mind. And he said, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. In other words, this political beast is what we're talking about here this morning, okay? We already know this political beast is already set up. 
We know it today as our United Nations. Okay? We know it as a coalition of all of the nations around the world coming together. Okay? Verse number two. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. This leopard, we take this from Deuteronomy 32 and verse number five. The word of God says that their spots are not our spots. They are forever changing, you understand. And he said, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, which is representative of Esau, Russia, okay? And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, it would they would play the role of Judah, but these are not of Judah. These are not the holy ones. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, we all know from Revelations 12 and 9 who the dragon is. If you're exactly right. If you're not understanding it clearly enough, this dragon is representative of Satan. So Satan gives his power unto who? This political beast, this one world government. Okay? Verse number three, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now, how can a head be wounded to death? It meaning that when this group, this coalition, uh, and one of them falls away, uh, this political beast is almost to a point of dying, to be deplenished, gone away with. But it says here that and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. After this is brought back by the power of whom? The dragon, Satan. Satan will bring this power and this coalition will come back and stand again, you see. Verse number four. And they worshiped the dragon, Satan, which gave power unto the beast, which is uh, the one world government, and they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, let me ask you, if all of the world are in coalition one with another, and they are saying what? Peace, peace. Then who is there to start a war? There is no one left to start a war. No one can fight this beast. It's all contained into one. So we know that this is real prophetic, guys. This is happening today as we speak. As we are here in service, December 23rd, 2018, this is happening right before your eyes. It's appointed unto you to pay attention and to watch these things. Five. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. This is three and a half years. But we know that this time has been shortened <coughs> through Revelations and through uh, Matthew 24. Christ said that uh, the time had been shortened for the very elect's sake. But if you go over there to Revelations 9 and chapter chapter 9 and verse 5, the Bible teaches us that it is a five-month period, okay? Down to 150 days. So we have here verse number 6. This goes together. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Turn with me over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Very familiar scripture. We utilize this quite often. It won't be something too awful new to you, but I want to bring this out to make sure that we are on the same page. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Starting at verse number 1. And now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken. Now, what's this subject about? 
about gathering together. Okay? This subject is about us gathering together again. Okay? When will the gathering happen? Is it happening now? Not yet. It'll happen at the last trump. The furthest trump out. Okay? Two, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Don't let this scare you. Is what the apostle is saying. Don't, don't be scared of this. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. And we know that. We know that it's right around the corner. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This falling away is the abominations that will take place. And this is uh, the apostasy state that the world will be in. Okay? Verse number four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Now this is that abomination to, that we're talking about. Or that is worship. So that he, as God, sitting in the temple of God, Shewing himself that he is God. What did Jesus call it? He called it in Matthew 24 when they say I'm what? I'm in the desert? Go not, go not there. If they say I'm in the temple? Go not, go not there. Christ has warned us and told us in Mark 13. He said I foretold you all things. And I, I, I've given you this direction and, and understanding. Luke 21 and Matthew 24, you'll find all of this in the same, you understand? All right. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? In other words, Paul's saying that uh, when we were all together and we were sitting around and talking about these things, do you remember me talking to you about this? And, and I would probably say the same thing. Guys, do you not remember uh, us going over this once before? And so we would all say, yes, I remember it, Brother Randall. So uh, we would go on to hear Paul. He said, verse 6, And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. Now, this word withholdeth, uh, this is uh, 2722 in your strong. Okay, in the Greek, 2722. And I got from it uh, to keep in memory and to possess and to retain. You possess what the church of Smyrna and Philadelphia have. You understand that? Say amen. amen. You know, that's what he's saying. Now read it like that again. And now you know that what withholdeth, in other words, now you know what Philadelphia and Smyrna were teaching about the Kenites, about who they were, uh, that he might be revealed in his time. Okay? That's what Paul's doing. He's just giving them a refresher. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. It sure does. Uh, and only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now this is uh, this can be confusing if you aren't careful. He said the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. It's really no mystery. Okay? Because we know it. It's not a hidden thing to you and I because we understand. He said that uh, it doeth already work. And he that who now letteth, who is it that lets? It's the angel, Michael, over in Jude 6. You'll find that same concept. But it's him that holds over in Revelation chapter 12. He holds tight to Satan until he is booted out of heaven. I don't have to go into the big controversial statement of uh, uh, Satan's in heaven. You know exactly he is. You know where he's at. He's up there accusing you and I every day. That's his position. And so him and his horde of angels will be kicked out at that time when Michael allows that. When God tells him when it's time. Verse number 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
In other words, this brightness is what? This is the truth. This truth. The truth shines above all darkness, does it not? And the truth is what? The Word of God. The Bible says, And the Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father. So we know that He's talking about Christ here. When he comes, he will do away with all of the things that uh, Satan has done. And friend, we'll be ready. Not only we'll be standing and waiting, but we'll be ready for him to come. Amen? We'll be ready for him to come on and get this thing over with. Because it'll be very hard to sit back and watch your friends and your families walk right into the Antichrist camp and accept everything that he has to give to them. Let's turn back over to Revelation chapter 13. This is who he is talking about, you see. This is who that John the Revelator is talking about in chapters in verse number 6. Let's start off in verse number 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. It, well, he will overcome some. But if you take Mark 13, I'm going to talk, walk over there real quick. Mark chapter 13 and verse number 11. But when they lead you, when they shall lead you and deliver you up, Take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever ye shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And that is prophetic to Joel's prophecy, and over in the book of Acts, chapter 1, on that day of Pentecost, and the tongue. Someone would ask, Brother Randall, do you believe in speaking of tongues? Well, I can't. Because I don't know any other language but English. I know a little bit of German, but very little, probably enough to get me in trouble. But uh, I believe in speaking in different tongues. I believe in speaking in uh, Spanish, and I believe in speaking in uh, Greek and in Hebrew and things of that nature, but I can't do that. But as far as an unknown tongue, this tongue won't come around until that day. Amen? It won't come around until that day. Thought I'd throw that in there. And he said here, again in verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kinders and tongues and nations. In other words, he has the whole world in his hand, does he not? He has the whole world. And what are we to do at this time? We're to walk over to Ephesians chapter 6 and make sure that we have what? The whole armor of God at that time. We need to make sure that we are prepared for that day. Coming up real soon, guys. Verse number 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. And they will worship him in a fashion that majority of them won't even realize that they are worshiping him. That's why it's important for the elect of God to know when he's here and his devices that he is going to be using. Amen. The way that we control our banking systems and the way that we control uh, paying and uh, uh, providing for our families and things of that nature, it very well could fall right into the same a loophole of what Satan is trying to do during this time. So it's important that we watch and we keep our minds open uh, to the ability of this antichrist, Satan, Amen. trying his best to take over. Eight, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If there's anything that you need to do, guys, you need to keep your name in the book. That's the name of the game. Keeping our names in the Lamb's book of life. What can remove my name from the Lamb's book of life, Brother Randall? When you 
worship the Antichrist, when you take what he has to give you, when he takes and uh, demands that you live this way and uh, go through his own system, uh, if you fall under those criteria, that can blot your name Amen. out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. It's a sad time. It's a time of deception. It's a time when the people are easily deceived. If they believed that Jesus was born on the 25th of December, are they not going to easily believe that Satan is Christ Amen. and that he has come and that to rapture them away? Amen. Is he not going to be able to deceive the whole world when the whole world is the majority and they're all walking after him? Wouldn't it just seem right to walk also with them? Sure it would. But you and I have better sense than that. We have studied the word of God. We have prepared ourselves to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. As we know that that day of the Lord comes uh, as a thief in the night. How can it come as a thief in the night? It will for them. It won't for us. We'll be prepared and we'll know when he's coming. <coughs> It shouldn't be a mystery. It should be something that you already know. <clears throat> Verse number nine. If any man hath an ear, let him hear. Ten. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And the only one that can lead into captivity is God. Amen? Amen? And God, if you're with God, then friends, you're in good shape. Amen? Amen? You're right where you need to be. If you're right on the side of God, you're right where you need to be. Amen. And he that killeth with the word, did I say word? That's what he's going to do. You take the S off of that. Okay? He's going to try to kill with the word. And the Bible said he must be killed with the word. The true word. Amen. That's exactly how it will be. And this is the patience and the faith of the saints. And we know that if you'll look over there real quick in Revelations 1 and 16, we'll know that it says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth, in his strength. Out of his mouth came that two-edged sword. We know that two-edged sword is the word of God. Amen. Is he going to say some kind of words? No, friends, it's already been written down. It's already been prophesied how it's going to happen and what's going to happen and where he's going to go. He's just a dead man walking, as Amen. one would say. He's just waiting for his time to come. So we know that we're on the correct side, okay? Verse number 11. Here is another concept. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, we know this other beast is coming, okay? Out of the earth, out of the people, and he had two horns. Now, the horns are what? We said earlier, it's power. Now, Chew on this for just a minute. And he spake as a dragon. We know that he's going to look like Christ, but it's going to be Satan. These two horns, chew on this for just a minute. We know that God had a lawgiver, and he also had a priest. And that to accomplish his work. I believe that he also will have a lawgiver, which will be the first political beast. And then he will also have a religious person, which is the harlot. Amen. Amen. The religious harlot. That one that's coming and proclaiming that he is God. Yes. So he will also have that opportunity to work his power, you see. And when the government is all for him and the religions are all for him, You are the minority. You understand that? As the elect of God, we will be the minority. We will be singled out pretty easily. 
It won't take very long for people to recognize who we are. It won't take long for people to recognize that, hey, you aren't on the van wagon, Claude. Won't you get on that van wagon? Well, I don't need to on your van wagon. I don't need nothing from him. God's going to provide for me everything I have need of. And I believe that today. Just as God provided Elijah in that day when he was running uh, uh, from uh, the being killed by the by uh, Jezebel, he was uh, hiding out. And the Bible says that he put him down by where water was running. And he also brought meat by the raven, you see, and fed him. God's going to provide one way or another. Amen. Amen. I don't have any problem worrying about that. I believe I'll get my meal just like I ought to. Amen. Amen. I believe God's going to provide for you and I and take care of us. Again, I believe these two horns are the ones that hold the power, which is the political system and the religious system, okay? Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. In other words, he's going to have all the power that uh, this political beast has, okay, before him. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, how are they going to go about worshiping the first beast? I truly believe it'll be through a currency. I believe that it'll be a way that they got to utilize this symbol and that to be able to make their way in life, you understand. It doesn't bother you that uh, in God we trust is on your money, do you? It don't bother you at all. One, we appreciate that. Okay? We know that we do trust in God, but it never changed the idea that that $20 bill is not a $100 bill. It's just a $20 bill. Okay, So we know that it's not going to be very much uh, impacting to the average individual. But for those that are ready, they're going to know. Thirteen. And he doeth great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven out of the onto the earth in the sight of man. And you'll find that also prophetically over in Daniel chapter 8, verse 23 through 25, that where he's going to work miracles in the sights of men. Many people are going to be astonished at this. I mentioned it here not too long ago. What are we going to do? We're going to laugh at it. Why is that? Because when you go to the magician party or to the to the to the uh, demonstration that the magician's got, and, and the magician's not very slick, and you already know his uh, tricks and how he is deceiving people. What do you do? You aren't fooled. You just chuckle. Same way with you and I. We're going to know his ways. We're going to know his mirrors and his smoke and all the things that take your mind off and put it on what he's doing, you see. So he says here, And he that doeth great wonders, 13, and that make fire come down from heaven onto the earth in the sight of men. It will be a very exciting time. It'll be a time to notice it shouldn't scare you, again, like what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2. Be not troubled. Don't let this bother you. Don't let it scare you. These things, that he's not going to hurt you at all. These things that he does will not hurt you. Okay? 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now there's different ways that this image can come about. Uh, we see that on our television is an image. You get an image through it. You get an image through this uh, Facebook. You get all sorts of images, okay? So therefore, we see that he can utilize everything at his fingertips. And that's what he'll do. He'll make sure everybody knows. 15. Did I finish 14? 
Let's do 14 again. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth in the means of the way of the miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. In other words, had that wound by the word of God. 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He will demand complete control and worship during this day. He will demand it. Uh, same as over there in Daniel chapter 3. The Bible says that uh, when you hear the flute and the, the sackbolt and all the clarinet and all these things, you are to bow down and to worship uh, when you hear these things. And what did it do? We've seen that uh, the three Hebrew children didn't do that. What happened to the three Hebrew children? Did they get eat up? No. They got thrown in a fire. Did it burn them up? No. The Bible says that when Nebuchadnezzar looked back into there, that, that only it was three, but there was another one in there, and he was likening it unto the Son of God. Amen. They were in there dancing around. Amen. Nothing was harming them. Same with you. During this prophetic time, nothing will harm you. If you have your mind focused on what to do, what are you going to do? You're going to keep your name in the book. Amen. Amen. You are not going to partake in anything that the Antichrist has got. Okay. Sixteen. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their hand or in their foreheads. Now, I hope your Bible is a King James Version. Just like mine. Now, does anybody have in their Bible a mark on their right hand or on their forehead? No, all of our Bible should say in. In their right hand and in your forehead. What is in your forehead? Your brain. Gray matter. Everything that you have retained through the word of God is sealed in your mind. That is what he is talking about. He's not talking about a tattoo or a computer chip or a barcode of any sort. He's not talking about that. This should help you. This should be something that will be a help to you uh, to understand that when you believe in who he is uh, and when you uh, do his work, that's your right hand, you understand? When you do his work, when you give out his pamphlets and when you give out his uh, revival request and you give out all these things, see, you are doing his work into his right hand. And But into the mind, we are sealed until that day of redemption. We are sealed with the knowledge uh, of knowing that God is going to see us through, through every bit of it. Okay? Seventeen, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Do you see that? You must have something representing him, be it a currency, whatever it may be. You say, well, how are we going to make it through, Brother Randall? Well, <clears throat> you're going to have need in that 150 days especially after the 150 days, of any belongings that you have. It's not going to be hard for you to give up those heirlooms or that 1934 Ford that you got or the Corvette that you may have that you drive every day, things of that nature. It may not bother you, you see. That's how that we will take and we will provide for our families. It'll be time to give up some things. Amen. Let these of the world have it. You aren't going to need it where you're going. There aren't going to be any vehicles there. Not going to be any heirlooms there. There's not going to be any treasures of that sort there. We're not going to need any of that. So there's that bartering system that we can utilize. Hopefully you've got something to work with. If not, get with a family that believes like manner and 
provide one for another. We don't have a whole lot of time. We can make it through 150 days. Sure. Verse number 18. Come to a close. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. This is what I wanted to give to you this morning as a gift. Wisdom. Understanding. Say again, Brother Randall, we, I already knew a lot of this. That's okay. It's a refresher. Yes. And as we come up on 2019, friend, there's a lot of things that's going to happen in this year coming. Believe you me. It has to. Because it's already growing. This political beast is already growing. And we're already seeing trouble within the bunch. And we're already looking for that head to be wounded. Man. Once that head is wounded, we know who's going to give him the power. We're looking for that, you see. But here he is. He said, here is wisdom. Let he let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Now, this word count goes into the Greek 5585. And this is talking about uh, uh, the calculation of uh, stone smoothed over for a long period of time. Now, this is a type of a calculating of knowing what these numbers mean. What is the numbers? The number is 666. Six, six. I could have 666 six, six tattooed all over my head, on my tongue, behind my ears, on the bottom of my feet, and that would not keep me out of the glory of heaven. Amen. The wisdom is, is this, to know that he comes <laughs> uh, at the sixth trump. Amen? Amen. Amen? We know that it's the sixth seal and the sixth trump and then the sixth vial that will follow afterwards. So we know all of these things come at the sixth trump. Amen. This is the wisdom. This is the knowledge that you need to make it through. This is not a tattoo. This is not a number that you got to worry about. It's going to happen, like it or not. Amen. If you are still on this earth living and breathing, you will be a part of that. Yes. And you will have knowledge to know that he comes at the sixth seal, at the sixth trump, and the sixth vial will take place at that time. It's not really that hard to understand if you get led out on the right foot. Somebody asked me one time, they said, how is it that you study the Word of God? Well, you must first of all get started out on the right foot. Right. I believe starting in Genesis 1 is a great place to start. And you give a man directions and he uh, trying to get to Morristown and you send him that direction there, friend, it's going to take him a lifetime to get to Morristown. Because he did not get started out on the right foot. Do you understand? Amen. And that is the concept of the whole word of God. The whole word of God is directed around this chapter. Do you realize that? All of God's word is directed around this chapter. That's why I picked this chapter this morning as my gift to you. To let you know and to refresh. <laughs> if something were to happen to me tomorrow, and this church closed down and we never seen one another again. The words would not perish. It would still be in your mind. And you would still have wisdom and knowledge to know that he comes at the sixth trump, at the sixth seal, and the sixth fire. Amen. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas gift. Amen. I hope it was something that you can use. Yes. I hope it's something that will be a help to you. Not a greater thing I could give. I'd have never known everybody's size and, and, and color that you enjoyed and, and, and how much money you really truly needed. And and, things. and I thought to myself, what better thing to give as a pastor Amen. but Amen. wisdom That's right. to my flock. So they'll come to know the truth. Not that you didn't know it, 
but that you're refreshed again. Maybe some this morning that had never heard. I know many people this morning are preaching uh, about when Christ was born and, and things of that nature, which was a wonderful thing. We'll never take away from salvation. Salvation must come first. And yes, I can preach a salvation message. But what need is there when everyone is saved? Amen, amen. That we teach the Word of God and we watch. Watch, amen. amen. What are we watching, Brother Randall? We're watching our world news. We're watching news from afar. Not worrying about what Trump did over there and who was behind the closet and who's coming out. It's not about all of that. Turn that stuff off. All that is is smoke and mirrors. They're trying to take your mind off the truth. Amen. You keep your mind on the east. You keep your mind on what's happening over in Jerusalem. Amen. And friends, you will always be wise. Okay. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. And this is my love to you. I care enough about you to help you and to show you the truth. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 13.